Hi, I'm Dr. Joshua Savari, Thoracic Medical Oncology from NYU Langone Health. Welcome to Lung Cancer Conversations. We're here today to discuss treatment approaches to unresectable stage three non-small cell lung cancer. To get us going, I wanna start with a case. So this is a 69-year-old man, a former heavy smoker, who presented his primary care physician with a cough initially had a CT scan of the chest, which revealed a lung mass. So our patient gets a PET CT, and the PET CT confirms that this is a 4.2 centimeter lesion in the left lower lobe. This patient had a biopsy, performed an EBUS endobronchial ultrasound guided biopsy. It showed contralateral mediastinal disease, or N3 disease. How does this change surgical resectability for you, Dr. Chang? Once the contralateral nodes are involved, then it becomes less of a localized disease that's treatable with surgery, and it should be directed to, to you in medical oncology. Uh, so this case is presented at tumor board, and because of the N3 disease, Dr. Chang does not want to operate, and I agree with that uh, in this specific situation. Uh, and the patient is recommended to get concurrent chemotherapy and uh, radiation. It's definitely a dance with radiation oncology and trying to get us coordinated. It's much easier for us to get started with you know, systemic therapy than it is for the radiation team to just start right off the bat. So we lead in and we use chemotherapy in this setting as more of a radio sensitizer to augment the effects that radiation is doing to enhance the local control. So Dr. Ori, walk us through the radiation. I mean, I know it's a complex course to get radiation together with chemotherapy. And we do need some time for the planning process. As soon as I know that the patient will need radiation, then I'll go ahead and schedule the simulation and start that process. If we're gonna go for a curative treatment, intent treatment course, that's usually about six weeks of treatment. Yeah, you bring up a very good point. Uh, this therapy is curative in its intent, uh, so speed is important here, getting patients set up. Um, you know, imaged, uh, you know, uh, uh, scanned and, and, and simulated is critical. And Ms. Rivera, um, patients who start concurrent chemotherapy and radiation, is there any coaching involved here? Definitely. We communicate and trying to start together. Then making the reference to social worker to help with all the issues with transportation. And, and then, of course, educate the patient how it's going to go, uh, the side effects. Usually, they are not too many, but yes, at the end, radiation plus the chemotherapy can be uh, more, um, you can say, serious about nutrition, the swallowing issues. So also, they need the referral right away to nutrition, but also we like to refer to the palliative care. Dr. Ori, what are some of the side effects that you see and why is it so important to get these symptoms under control quickly? Well, of course, you want your patients comfortable and as symptom-free as possible. Common side effects during radiation, uh, like the main one we, we are concerned about is acute esophagitis, uh, causing trouble swallowing. We clearly need more and, and better for our patients uh, in the clinic. So this patient completes concurrent chemotherapy and radiation and fortunately does not have any esophagitis and actually tolerates therapy. Dr. Prishigal, what are you doing uh, for this patient? So I think this is um, definitely an, an exciting space that we have after a patient completes their definitive chemo and radiation. I then choose to send them for a CAT scan of the chest just to make sure that nothing else has popped up. I try to get this scan you know, within three to four weeks of finishing treatment because we know that we try to start immunotherapy within about 40 days-ish from completing therapy. So if that scan looks good, then we talk about the potential role of immunotherapy, pluses and minuses, and if this patient is a candidate or not. Who's ordering that CT chest? I feel like it's an arrangement that we usually make. Usually I, I say, hey, I'll get this scan. Maybe you want to get the one in three months. Or, or sometimes I find that the patient makes a connection with the medical oncologist and wants to continue that journey. And we loop in radiation oncology. In our practice, we talk about that CT chest from the get-go, and we actually schedule it uh, post, you know, sort of the discussion on when to do chemotherapy and radiation. So it's on the calendar. So in my experience, talking through this process, this journey from day one is extremely helpful. If they understand that this is a journey uh, and that we're hopefully uh, um, thinking about curative intent here with this treatment, it, it actually feels and it makes more sense uh, for our patients. So, you know, this patient uh, had the scan, and again, Again, it didn't show any evidence of any uh, um, progression. And again, what we're looking for is stability on these imaging. We're not looking for response. As long as the disease has not progressed and become metastatic, uh, to me, that's an indication to continue with the planned consolidation therapy.
I think coaching our patients, uh, and in my experience, explaining to them the reason, the rationale for the scan goes a long way. So Dr. Prishigal, when you then have a patient in your office who's completed concurrent chemotherapy and radiation, what are your next steps and, and, and how are you coaching patients uh, for that process? We always lay the groundwork. You're gonna complete X amount of weeks and cycles of chemo. You're gonna have about a month of radiation. And then after that, we're gonna get a scan. And if that scan looks good and you have no contraindications to immunotherapy, then we're looking at immunotherapy. Something that I commonly see in my practice is a grade one or two pneumonitis radiographically and patients are asymptomatic. Dr. Ori, how do you talk to your patients about that? Is that a contraindication to consolidation immunotherapy? And there's still a lot to learn in the space. Uh, both about who to select or when to, you know, when to say that immunotherapy should not be initiated. So I think if you're going to withhold that treatment, you really need a good reason for it. So to me, imaging findings with no symptoms uh, would not be a good reason to uh, withhold a, a potentially important treatment. Yeah, I often find times find that a difficult discussion with patients, but also with colleagues. You know, thinking about when to withhold immunotherapy or when to give immunotherapy. Again, you know, critical out in the community. You're not alone. Uh, you have colleagues. You have, you know, the academic uh, centers. Uh, and you have tumor boards that I think these are really important cases to discuss uh, with within your systems because these are complex questions. You know, curious, Dr. Prishigal, are there any contraindications for starting immunotherapy in this patient population? I think about underlying autoimmune disorders. I think also we have to think about um, other underlying like pulmonary fibrosis or issues that may put them at risk at baseline. I think if a patient has a driver alteration, for example, EGFR and ALK, that's a really important discussion to have with patients uh, because we know patients don't respond as well uh, to uh, immunotherapy from the metastatic setting. Dr. Ori, um, a lot of discussion about, you know, when we start consolidation immunotherapy uh, and the time to starting consolidation immunotherapy, what's the rationale for starting quickly? The recommended practice is to, to start the immunotherapy within a month and a half or so of completing the radiation. Um, I would say that if you would think that if it's such an important treatment, you'd want to get that treatment in as early as possible. I agree, I think most of the data supports starting though as, as quickly as possible. We're gonna wrap up on patients with stage three unresectable non-small cell lung cancer. Hey guys, what a fantastic conversation about stage three unresectable non-small cell lung cancer. I think you guys hit on so many important clinical pearls. Of course, the initial discussion about what disease are we facing here? And then getting that interdisciplinary discussion together, going with your radiation oncologist, how are we gonna sync this planning? Then at the end of chemo radiation, we can get our interval CAT scan. And the way I talk about this CAT scan with my patients is I say, hey, this is my scan, not yours. This is not us understanding how you're treating, how this disease is responding. This is so we can understand that considering immunotherapy as the next step, this helps us out. We wanna make sure that we select the right patients for this consolidation or adjuvant immunotherapy option. So I think you guys hit on all the really high yield topics that, are, that we're facing in the clinic on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for the great panel, everyone. That was awesome.